He's worthy. He is worthy. Amen. Amen. Praise God. This is how we fight our battles. I got to get something here. Amen. Okay. This is how we fight our battles. Amen. We fight them right here in church. We fight them in our personal time, in our prayer closet. We fight them. We fight those battles with the word of God, with the, with the word that's sharper than any two-edged sword. That's how we fight our battles. It's a battle that we're not going to lose. Maybe we don't see the breakthrough by tomorrow or by, the, by breakfast or by lunch tomorrow, but we still know how to fight our battles. Amen. So hallelujah, we know that today is a special day for all the mothers and I know I said Happy Mother's Day, but we want to say it again. Happy Mother's Day. What do y'all think? Y'all got a little picture back. Oh, I, got, I need a better hallelujah and a better clap than that. We worked hard yesterday. I'm excited. I don't know. I was excited. We had a lot of volunteers yesterday, and we just had all the little talents and the creative juices flowing, and it just made for a good team, and it made for all of us having such a wonderful time in the Lord. Amen. So today, I know we're ready for a Mother's Day message, and you know we always have one, but it's always going to be in conjunction with more of the Word of God. Hallelujah. And we just thank you, Father. We just praise you, Father. Taking notes? I got your title. Are you ready? Oh, okay, yes. All phones are on silent. I, I didn't know what you were trying to share with me there, but all phones, please put them on silent, all notifications. So we asked you to do that today, as well as if you don't have a Bible, by the way, with you, and you want to use the Bibles in front, we use the same translation together. And when you read together, you get it in your spirit quicker. So um, if you don't have a Bible, please uh, reach down there and grab yourself one, and you can use that for today's message. Amen? So the title of today's message, are y'all ready? Mother, may I? Okay, I'm going to say it again. Mother, may I? Ah, there it is. <laughs> Who remembers that game? Does anybody remember playing my... We got, her. we got him over here saying, he remembers, mother, may I? Yeah, okay, for those of you who, most of you, okay, who's never played that game before when they were a child? Okay, okay, so we have, okay, we have a few in the house, all right. So for those of you who've never heard of the game, mother, may I? It's about some kids getting together, because I used to play it when I was a kid. We'd all get together, and uh, the mother would stand, the mother would, somebody would play the mother, the mother would stand at a distance, and then all the other kids, maybe there was three or four kids, they'd stand uh, probably uh, some yards away. And the whole purpose of the game was that a child had to say, Mother, may I take two steps? And the mother had to say, yes, you may. Or the mother could say, no, you take one step. If the child forgot to, to ask Mother, may I, or to say, Mother, may I, they couldn't move. And the whole thing is to get to the mother, who could get to the mother the fastest, was the one who could play the mother. Now, back then, there was not a lot of confusion about when you're born a boy, you're a boy, and when you're born a girl, you're a girl. So it didn't matter who played the mother. It didn't mean somebody was experiencing any feelings or, 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 or dysmorphia, body dysmorphia maybe, with their bodies about being a different gender. So no, it didn't matter who played the mother, a boy or a girl. The whole thing was is that that person, that child wanted to reach that mom because that child wanted an opportunity to boss their friends around. And was wonderful about this, and it was such a simple game, but there were so many things in this game and so many teachings that I think that a lot of us missed because we were too immature to appreciate it. Mother, may I? So this morning, we're going to be back in, we're going to actually go back in time. So some of you are going to feel a little nostalgic for those of you who have played that game when you were, or you played that game when you were a child. And we're going to find out what biblical lessons we missed when we were playing the game called Mother May I. Mothers, you're going to love me after this service is over. And um, I may just become your top number one preacher, female preacher after today. So mothers, may I proceed? Hallelujah. Amen. All right, let's go to Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. Are we there, getting there? I got to get there. Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians 
Are we there? All right. Ephesians chapter 6. We're going to be in verse 1. Are we there? All right. So you're going to enjoy this today. So I want you all just to kind of read the word with me. And let's just let the Holy Spirit take over. Amen. So Ephesians chapter 6. It says here. Children, obey your parents because you belong to the Lord. For this is the right thing to do. Children, you know to obey your parents. You know to obey your, not only your fathers, but your mothers. Obey them because it's the right thing to do. Verse 2, it says here, honor your father and your mother. This is the first commandment with a promise. It says here, if you honor your father and mother, things will go well for you and you will have a long life on earth. Hey. <laughs> well, if I don't honor my mother and my father... Does that mean things won't go well for me? You better believe they won't go well for you. I can give you lots of stories about myself not honoring my mother and my, and what well, the time my mother and not honoring her. And I can give you lots of stories how things did not go well for me, especially in my adult years. <laughs> but I'm probably maybe touch on one of those stories before this is over. So when you honor something, which, what do you do? You respect somebody. We honor the Lord. You know that more, the more you honor the Lord, the more you'll honor your mothers and your fathers. Amen. So when we were playing Mother May I, there's, when I was reading this and putting this all together, Mother May I had some very, very interesting biblical lessons already. The first one was children obey. Mother May I, yes, you may. There was such a, a, a reverence that was taking place when we were playing that game. And like I said, we all just missed it. Obedience. That game represented obedience, being obedient to that person playing the mother. And what was interesting about those times when we were playing that game is that no one was ever fighting. We never fought with each other because we were trying to get to the mother and we were trying to compete. It was always a healthy competition. And it was also a healthy uh, way of having camaraderie with each other and with the kids at that time. We didn't have electronics back then. We didn't have cable television back then. We had that old knob, click, click. I think we had like three channels back then. <laughs> and so we learned how to socialize. We learned how to be with other ways. We understood that we were always playing outside, and we understood um, the uh, importance of building relationships in the neighborhood, amen, with other kids. So, Mother, may I had that biblical lesson of obedience but we were just too young to notice it. We were just too busy wanting to be the boss of everybody. We, didn't, we missed that whole other part. And the second here in number two, it said, honor your father and your mother. You know, a lot of kids tend to honor their fathers or their dads because maybe they're a little more scared of the dads. But they forget, oh, mom, she's fine. She, she, she'll let it go. She's just too sweet. She's not going to, she's more sensitive. Well, you got, and, and because of that, it's tempting to take advantage of moms and kind of try to, get away with more stuff with the moms. So we want to honor the father, but we want to honor the mother. We want to respect. We want to revere. Isn't that what we do here in, with the Lord? We respect and revere the Lord. We respect and revere one another. And that mother, may I, when we were saying, mother, may I, there was a reverence. There was a respect for the mothers, for that person playing the mother. That's the same reverence and respect that we need to have for our mothers today. And I know some moms maybe have gone on to be with the Lord. But if you can reflect back, so I just thank God that I was respectful and revered my mother while she was on the earth. Hallelujah. And the closer you get to God, the more reverence and the more respect you'll have for your parents, the more reverence and respect you'll have for one another. And most of all, the more reverence and respect you're going to have for the Lord as you draw close to him. He says, you draw nigh to me, I shall draw nigh to you. And it says here in verse 3, if you honor your father and mother, things will go well for you and you will have a long life on earth. So I tell you today, I'd give you a charge. Honor your father and your mother. Honor your mothers. Honor both parents. But today we're talking about moms. Honor your mother that your days will be long and that things will go well for you. Amen. How many, thing, how many, you know, how many people want their things to go well for them in their lives? I know I do. Amen. So I want you to go with me to Proverbs chapter 1. So mother, may I had some obedience. Mother, may I had a lesson of, of respect. There's not a lot of respect. We don't have a lot of mother, may I's today. We have a, a lot of mother, I am today. <laughs> Everybody catch that? Mother, I am doing it. No, it's mother, may I? Uh, parents, may I do this? No, it's I am doing it. 
I did a lot of that to my mom. I wasn't a safe person, neither was she at the time. I did a lot of I am doing it and, and I'm going to do it because you don't understand. I have to do it. And if you say no, I'm still going to do it. <laughs> Isn't that how we grow up? The, the Bible says that foolishness is bound up in a child's heart. And it takes the Lord and Jesus Christ to start getting all that foolishness out. And of course, as we grow up and we age, that all works together. Amen. So we hear at um, Proverbs. You know what? Go to Pro Proverbs chapter 1. Are we there? Because we're going to be in another problem just at Pro Proverbs in just a moment. But Proverbs chapter 1 is where I want you to be. Proverbs chapter 1, and I want to start at verse 8. It says here, my child, what does it say next, church? Listen, when your father corrects you. Listen, listen, Linda. Y'all ever remember that video? Listen, Linda, listen. She was like this high, telling his mom, listen, Linda, the cutest video I've ever seen. So cute. You got to just go watch it for a refresher just to kind of get you going. It's so cute, and so you can get a good laugh. About his little child, he was telling his mother, you better listen, Linda. And he kept saying it over and over, but it was like he was having a real conversation with his mother, and it was just the cutest thing. And he was like, yay, hi, so tiny. But we don't need to grow up like that. It's cute when, we're, when they're little, but it's not so cute when they start getting older, right? <laughs> it's not so cute. So it says here the next part. Here it is. Here's the meat of it. Don't neglect your mother's instruction. When we were playing that game, mother, may I? I didn't, we couldn't neglect the instruction because that would mean I wouldn't get up to the place I needed to get to grab mother so that I can be the boss, so I could be the leader, so I could have the authority, amen? So it says here, don't neglect your mother's instruction. If I could go back in time and, and, and ask the Lord, Lord, I could just need another round with my mom so I could just be a little better. I want to be a better child. I was her only child. I was her only child or only child, period, and I just wanted to be a better child. She thought the sun rose and set in me, but that's not my memory of myself. <laughs> I just, that wasn't my memory, especially when I got a little older. Actually, till I was 18, I was pretty good. And then when I turned 18, I was pretty vicious because all I could think about was drugs and alcohol. So if, if anything she was going to say, any instruction she had for me, I didn't want to hear it because she already was a Christian. She became a Christian when I was 16 years old or 15, somewhere around there, and um, I was not listening. She invited me to church, and I, I, I would say, I'll be there, and this was when I was 18 now. So she I'll be there, I'll, I'll meet you there, because I was already partying, so I would end up standing her up for Mother's Day. I'd stand her up for Easter. I'd stand her up on every special occasion. And so when I think about me today, I wish I could go back and talk to that young girl that just didn't have a care in the world except about herself, and I wish I could undo some of that, but... We can all say that about a lot of things in our life, and we just got to now, it's important what we're doing today in the Lord, and we thank God God has saved us. We thank God that we're here in church, that we're able to share with each other the love of God and with the people out there and in our workplaces and in our homes. How many know we're always walking examples? But if your mother is still here today, I just, I just really, really challenge you to show your mother just an extra dose of honor, not just today because it's Mother's Day, but let it, it should be all the time. My husband and I, over some years, uh, my mom doesn't live here, but my mother-in-law and my father-in-law do, and then my dad, live, my dad lives here. Thank God we have three parents that come to our church on a regular basis. But if my mom lived here, she'd be coming to this church too, but she lives in Brownsville. She moved away when I was 24 years old. I lived with her till I was 24, and she was on her way back to the valley, and she'd been praying for me all that time till I was 24 years old from the time I was 18. She didn't know the um, extent of my drug addiction because I hid it from her and my alcoholism. And she was praying for me and inviting me to church. And I would pop into church just to humor her and appease her and kind of not so that she wouldn't say anything. But it wasn't very often because I was, but I remember this one particular time, one time I was very inebriated. I'd been up since Saturday morning. It's now Sunday. It's now Saturday. It's going into Sunday early, early morning. And I was trying to make a decision whether I was going to meet my mom on Easter Sunday for church. And I, I, had, I was very, very um, intoxicated with drugs and a, a whole buffet of drugs and, and alcohol. And I was trying to find out how I was going to get to church to meet my mom and keep my commitment. And I was sitting there with all my friends and even though I was in the condition that I was in, there was just something just really that was bothering me because I knew already I was making a decision not to go and, and to stand her up. 
And I said, you know what? I'm not going to go. I'm just not going to go. And if that couldn't have been the worst part of it, two, it's like now it's Sunday night, it's Monday, it's Tuesday, and I'm barely coming home. She has no idea where I'm at. She has no idea if I'm okay. No phone call. And so those are the things that I get mad about myself. I, said, I cannot believe I did that to my mom. The torment a mother would go through when a child doesn't come home. At least a phone call, right? But no, I was too busy partying. That was so much more important to me than honoring and respecting and listening to my mother's instruction. And so, so I spent that day thinking I was going to have a better time staying away from church, even though I wasn't 100% saved. I was just kind of, my mom had been praying. I was, she, had, she always had Christian television and radio going in the house. She was going to church, serving God. And there I was laying around and thinking I just had my whole life ahead of me that I was just going to live like that all the way until I, you know, went into the grave. And so I wish I could go back, like I said, and talk, but we're just young sometimes and we're just not, you know, I didn't have the Lord in my life at that time. My mom did, but she got saved when I was a teenager. So now life has to come in and teach me a few things that maybe my mother can no longer teach me. And uh, needless to say, when I was 24, she's been praying for me. Now I'm going to 24 years old now. She's moving back home. She leaves me here in Houston. As soon as she drove away, I'm talking like within a few weeks, my whole world came crashing down. I got DWI. I was driving drunk. This is after doing it 13, 12, whatever it was at the time, 10 years, because I got saved a little later. But after driving drunk for so many years and getting away with it, I finally got pulled over by the cops. I think I was like 20. God, it could have been 20. I don't know, five. I don't go back that far, but 91, 92, however old that would make me. But it was a long time ago. And so I'm driving, and then the cop pulls me over. And I, I, of course, you know, I was a mess. And they took me in. And it was very hum one of the most humiliating experiences I have ever, ever experienced. One of the most humiliating things I've ever been through. And that's how my life started going down a downward spiral. <laughs> I think I got arrested again two years later for a hot check or something. So this is my life. This is who I was. I was very responsible. I was responsible enough to keep my, a roof over my head, but not responsible enough always to pay my bills because I was too busy partying and doing drugs. But my life was going downhill. As soon as she drove away, within weeks, everything just came, started coming down. And I said, boy, and you know, back then, we, had, we didn't have texting and personal messenger. We didn't have all the Facebooks. We didn't have all that. So there wasn't a lot of communication and she certainly wasn't going to tell her what happened to me. And my aunt surely didn't know what happened to me, because I surely didn't tell my Aunt Diana. I didn't tell anybody. It's just my friends knew. And so, um, you know, I, I was a disappointment to my mother, and, 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 and I didn't want to continue to be, and I, I didn't realize the whole time she's over there, I'm not really talking to her too much anymore, and all I remember hearing was, you should get to church. You need to come to church. And, all, and I just wanted, I didn't want to hear her instruction back then. I didn't want to hear it. I don't want to go to church. I, I don't want to hear it. I'll go when I want to go. You know, that's how I was. And look at me now. Look what the Lord has done. My mom said, me, all I was praying for you to go to church on Sunday mornings. And now she goes, I lost my daughter to the Lord. <laughs> she said, I guess I'd rather lose you to the Lord than lose you to the old life you were living. I said, that's right. Because she knows that we're sold out for the Lord and that the kingdom of God comes first. So she has an understanding. My dad now has the understanding because we've gotten closer over the many, many years. And he's been coming to church. So our parents and my in-laws, they have a new understanding of what being sold out to the Lord. And, and putting ourselves aside so that God can use us. So the master could use us for you to, as utensils for you all. Because that's what's important. And thank God that our family, our natural family, gets to be a part of that. So we're very grateful. And my mom serves the Lord, too. And hopefully we'll be seeing her this summer. So pray for my mom to come to Houston. I haven't seen her in a year and a half. It'll be a year and a half by the time she gets here. Last time we saw her was in the, uh, the launching of the church, the end of January 2020. Right? It was before the, right before the pandemic. All right. So don't neglect your mother's instruction. She knows what she's talking about. You don't know anything. You don't know. You're not a techie. You don't know how to do the computer, so therefore mom doesn't know anything. No, mom knows a lot. She's lived a lot longer, been there, done that, got the T-shirt, the ball cap, the bumper sticker, the pin. Mama knows best. Amen. Mother, may I? Remember that, children. Mother, may I go outside? Mother, may I play with so-and-so down the street? Mother, may I go do this? Got to remember that. Of course, we, we respect our dads as well. Dads are in there. Parents are in there. Verse 9, what you learn 
from them. What you learn from your mothers will crown you with grace and be a chain of honor around your neck. <laughs> you know, the greatest inheritance that a mother can leave a child is a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. I know we're all worried about got to make sure the money's going here and the money's going there and I got to make sure I have this money. They got to have an inheritance and the life insurances and we're all so concerned and that's all good and wisdom and that's all good and fine. But we can't forget that, that it's very important to leave our children an inheritance. If your child sees you starting to serve the Lord and doesn't matter what age they are, if they're, if they're young, that's great. If they're teenagers, that's good too. Um, but when they start getting adults, they're going to have to find their way because mothers tend to do a lot of this. And sometimes the kids just want to hear it. The older ones just want to hear this, right? And so what do we do, mothers? We continue to leave an inheritance. We take our battle from here and we take it into the prayer closet on our knees. Amen. Because when my mom did that, when she stopped talking and she moved away, guess what happened? The Lord started dealing with me. And we, we, we got it all backwards. We think we're supposed to, if we can just tell them one more thing, they'll get it. If we just tell them, that, especially the, I'm talking about adult kids. If you just tell them that one more instruction, they're going to get it. If, if you, they haven't gotten it by now, by what you've said, they're not going to do it. But I tell you, when, Lord, when the Lord steps in, he can do a lot better job than some of our words, hallelujah, and some of our heated discussions with our kids. And we'll just call them that. So don't neglect your mother's instruction. When we were playing Mother May I, we couldn't neglect that instruction because that would mean I could never be the boss. So I had to get up there to the mother and I had to do all my little steps and my little bunny hops and whatever the mother told me to do who was in authority, I wanted to do it because I wanted to be the boss of everybody. And that was every kid's. Isn't that fun to be the boss of other kids and nobody get mad about it? That was Mother May I. Well, we wish we had that with our moms that we, they could be the boss of us and we'd never get mad. But how many know we're born into sin and we got to deal with this crazy flesh even as a young child? <laughs> So don't neglect your mother's instruction and don't forget, mothers, you're setting an example for your kids. If you don't go to church, guess what? They're never going to go to church. I'm talking about the kids that are still moldable and pliable. <laughs> Amen. You can't force 30-year-old child or your 40-year-old child to go or your, your, your kid, your child, to go to church with you and force them. How many know that would be error, <laughs> foul ball? You have to take a step back. You have to do a lot more praying than you do a lot more talking. So less talk and more prayer. So it says here, what you learn from them will crown you with grace and be an honor around your neck. What you learn from your mothers, what have you learned from your moms? I learned a lot of things from my mom even when she wasn't saved. I learned structure in the house. I learned that I had to have chores and I had to do them and then it had to be done correctly. I learned that I had a schedule. I learned that, that my mom was the boss in the house. And I'll tell you one thing I learned, and even though I wasn't saved all the way till I was 31 years old, I never, my mom has never, even in my unsaved, wicked state, never, ever, ever said one curse word in front of her till this day. Of course, not, I don't curse anymore, but I'm saying all my young life, never cursed, not one word, not one cross curse word to my mom in my entire life. She's never heard me curse, not one time. And can we say that about you today? Can we say that about the kids today? It, it, they're young, they're coming up. We're talking like they got kids on movies now that are, that are cursing in PG-13s and even, I don't know if PGs, but because PG-13, uh, but they're cursing and they're really young. And it's very, very sad that people think that that is the way to talk because everybody's doing it. And then when people talk like that, it's like, oh, well, they do it so I can do it. And it's the way people talk now. That's the new language. It's the new English language. So it's okay. How many know it's not okay? to curse your parents. It's not okay to say uh, curse words to your mothers because you think you can get away with it because they're a softer temperament. We've got to respect our moms. Moms, you leave the inheritance of a relationship with Jesus Christ. You start going to church. If you've got kids that are older, you start going to church, you start praising God and just thanking God that one day your kids will serve the Lord. Amen? There's not one more thing you're going to say to an adult person that's going to make that difference. It's example. It's, and we're going to get to that in just a moment. It's example. Do y'all remember 2 Timothy? And some of you may have read this. In chapter 1, Apostle Paul says, tell Timothy, or he, he tells Timothy actually, that he remembers Timothy's genuous, uh, genuine faith. And he says, you know where you got that faith, basically. He says, your faith was handed down from your grandma Lois and your mother Eunice. 
And look who Timothy turned out to be. He made it into the epistles. He made it into the New Testament. Hallelujah. Ended up being a mighty man of God, a young one at that. And Apostle Paul was training him and mentoring him and discipling him to be a powerful man of God. And to take care of things. You never know who we have sitting here. We never know if we have these children sitting here and they're going to be the next Billy Graham. We don't know if they're going to be the next Kenneth Hagin. We don't know if they're going to be the next whoever. We don't know. But mothers, you are setting the example. You are setting the example of how to put God first. And you will hand that down. And you maybe never have to even say a word about the Lord Jesus. You just demonstrate, demonstrate demonstrate be an example that's what we do around here pastor and i have to be the example be the example then our leaders that are coming up i have to be the example be the example because people are watching us kids are watching their mothers kids are watching their fathers what are you doing grandkids are watching their grandparents grandkids are are watching everybody's watching just like timothy's his he was watching his grandma he was watching his mom and he had a spiritual inheritance that was left for him I want to uh, go to Proverbs. I'm going to finish up in this area here. Because this is a good part. So it's going to bring us uh, to a nice close at a, at a good time. I know you all have plans with your moms today. So God was uh, mindful of that for everybody. But we knew, I knew this message was going to bring a lot of encouragement and a lot of reminders and a lot of even some nostalgia for some of you that remember when we were playing Mother May I, and maybe even things that I'm saying right now, you're remembering, hey, yeah, we were learning that. We were learning respect. We were learning honor. We were learning about obedience. We were learning about all these things, and we were learning uh, about listening and following instructions, as, as Proverbs, we just read that. We we're learning about following instructions and listening. We were learning about discipline. We were learning about all those things in that little game, who was, who, which seemed so insignificant at the time, playing Mother May I. If y'all want to ever go look on YouTube, it'll tell you uh, on the YouTube how it was played. Very simple, but so much valuable biblical lessons in it. Proverbs 31, we're going to start at verse 27. Are y'all learning something today? Are y'all enjoying this? And the thing is, is that everything that I'm speaking, you can still apply to your life in one way or another. Even if your moms are, have on gone to be with the Lord, you can still apply this to your life for other areas and with other people. Verse 27 says she carefully, watch this. She carefully watches everything in her household and suffers nothing from laziness. On those old school moms, they, they're not lazy. They, I don't know what happened today, maybe computers and whatever, but we're a little lazier than our moms used to be or our moms were or are, but or they, they were not lazy. We became the lazy ones. That generation was not lazy. That, as a matter of fact, my mom, she said she had to, uh, as she was getting older and then she became a Christian, she realized how intense she was about so much structure and so much cleaning and so much. She said she had to scale back a little bit. She realized it was a little over the top, but I appreciate her for that. It taught me a lot about discipline. It taught me a lot about staying committed to something. It taught me a lot about being accountable in the house to what my mom told me to do. So um, it taught me a lot of things. So I'm, I'm appreciative of the structure and her military style about telling me how she wanted it clean. She would train me and then let, let me do it. And that's the kind of mom I had. And I'm very, very grateful because now that I'm a Christian, I know how to apply what I learned through her and as well as now being in the Lord through the word of God. So she carefully watches everything in her household and suffers nothing from laziness. Mother, may I be so, so like you to carefully watch over my household, everything in my household. She was mindful. She was very mindful. How many of you have moms like that? They're very mindful, very mindful of everything that goes on in the house. Boy, they, you can't get nothing past that house. Even though I hid it from my mom, what I was doing, what I was doing, it's because I didn't come home. That's why she wouldn't catch it because I'd stay gone for three days. I'd get all myself together, look all proper, and I'd come back home like if nothing. And she could never tell because I knew how to throw the war paint on and do the hair. And she just never knew what I was up to all those three days other than the fact that why didn't I call her? Oh, I just got carried away with my friends, spending the night at my friend's house. And she just never knew really what was going on. I didn't tell her till I was in my late 30s. Um, what I was up to back then and why I never called her. But she was watch over everything in her house. She said she'd look out the window to see if I was coming home, the torment that I put her through. Go down to verse 30. Oh, don't do that to your, don't do that to your moms, kiddos. Don't, don't be like me. 
Don't do it. You'll be my age and going, oh, I wish I hadn't treated my mom like that. Oh, I wish I had just called her. I wish I hadn't done what she told me not to do. I wish I had just obeyed the instruction she gave me. I wouldn't be in this predicament. I wouldn't have this problem. I would, this wouldn't have happened to me. So we know moms carefully watch over everything in their household. So children, respect, revere, be obedient, receive the instruction. I know y'all loving me today, kids. <laughs> It says here in verse 30, drop down. It said, charm is deceptive and beauty does not last. <laughs> but a woman, a mother who fears the Lord will be greatly praised. For those of you who want children, who have not had children, and you want children and you want to bring them into this world, you uh, raise them up in the things of God. Let the seeds of the Lord go into their lives early doesn't matter what temperament you're raising. All of them need God in their lives early, early in life. And they'll be the better for it. Maybe they might go off for a season sometimes, but they'll always come back because of the seeds that were planted. You parents, I mean, yesterday, yesterday we had a volunteer time to do the Mother's Day. And so called them in. Everybody came, came in ready to work. And Brother Hector and Sister Veronica, they brought their, their son Christian, which of course, I didn't know who was, if kids were coming. It didn't really matter if they did. Uh, and so they came in because Brother Christian had a game, they thought. Well, it ended up he did not have a game. So he ended up coming with his parents. He wanted to come to volunteer. So I said, you know what? I'm going to give him some projects. Well, I'm thinking I'll give him one project and he'll be done. You know, most kids, they do one project. Okay, and they'll sit and that'll have been fine with me. I wanted him to feel included. So he does a project and he comes back. I got, I'm waiting for another project. I said, okay. I said, all right, so he does another project. And he comes back, he goes, I'm ready for my next project. Boy, yeah. by the time it was all done, he had this whole church all sparkling. <laughs> and I use him as an example because he's so young. He's like, I think probably nine, I think eight or nine. So he's so young, but I didn't expect that. So what am I, why did I bring that up? Because he sees his parents. Now they're wanting to start volunteer. They signed up for volunteering. So if you start seeing them in places here in the next couple of weeks, it's because they signed up for volunteering. Now he wants to sign up for volunteering. He sees his mother. He sees his father. Now he wants to do it. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that what it's all about? That's the inheritance you leave your kids. That's the inheritance you hand down is a godly example, a godly lifestyle. So charm is deceptive. And beauty does not last, but a woman who fears the Lord will be greatly praised. Not fear the Lord, I'm scared of God, but a fear, a reverential fear, a, a, a respect. There it is. An honor. Lord, I respect and I honor you. And even as a child, you know that you can have that honor for the Lord as a young child, and it will transfer over to your relationships with your families, your parents, your dads, your mothers, and so and so forth. Amen. So a woman who fears the Lord will be greatly praised. How many know the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge of the Holy One is understanding? That's the beginning. When I began to have a fear of the Lord in the very beginning of my life or the very beginning of salvation at 31 years old, I began to understand I feared the Lord and then he would lead me in the paths of wisdom. And I, and I, I was too afraid to disappoint God. I didn't want to disappoint God because I had disappointed myself and my mom and my family so much already. I said, I don't want to live that way anymore. I just want to give my life to the Lord. I, I, I want to understand the fear of God. And I got it really early in my Christianity within the first year. I understood fear right away. Like I told you all before, I don't need two or three Damascus experiences to get this. I just needed a few that were before. And then I was confirmed. I mean, I, was a, I conformed to Christianity. I gave my life to the Lord. And I've had to have very few spankings in my Christianity because I am one of those people that once I'm in something, I'm all in, all committed, super loyal, super all the way in. There is no going back. Well, I should I have a little cocktail here? Should I have a little? No, 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 no. Why? Because I think about who I'm influencing. I think about kids. I think about kids around me because sometimes I'll have nieces and nephews around. I think about, uh, I think about everybody else before myself. If, is that what's going to bring glory to God? Is that the example that I want to be setting as an aunt? Is that an example I want to be setting as a wife? Is this an example I want to be setting for my church that I have a cocktail here and there, a glass of wine? Is that who I really want, how I want to represent? And so you're saying, well, pastor, you're not really a mom. No, I'm not a biological mom, but today I was reminded 
with all these things coming in. I think Sister Cassidy made me something or made me some, a cake or made, I don't even know, but it was up there. It was so beautiful. It was this little bun cake. It's so cute. Remind me to take it home because I put it in the fridge. And so um, Sister Norma came in with roses. I mean, this is, this is a first for me, I think. I, I didn't ask for it. I mean, I was like, okay, it's just Norma driving through the parking lot like A.J. Foyt because she left. And we said, bye, Norma. And we stayed late. We stayed later. And, and we're like doing things. So we're taking off. And then here comes Norma. And she blocks us in. You know, I said, oh, she must have forgot something important here after volunteering. And she stops and blocks me in or blocks us in. And she comes out with this Baskin Robbins ice cream Oreo cake. I said, oh, my sweet Lord, do you know how long I've been craving one of these? I've been craving one of these for a long time, and here it is. And I'm looking at my husband, and I'm like, oh. She says, because you're like a spiritual mom to all of us. And so she wanted, and she goes, and you know what? That's just part one. And I said, oh, my goodness. So then today she brings me, I have never, never as a pastor received roses for Mother's Day. <laughs> so, you know, I don't have biological kids, but I have a lot of spiritual ones, so I have a lot more kids than all of y'all. <laughs> I have the most kids than all y'all have. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So we're going to finish up here at verse 31, and we're going to close it out. Reward her for all she has done. Reward your moms. Reward your wives. Reward them for all they have done and, and respect them. Even if you have a wife maybe that doesn't have a child yet, just reward her. Make her feel special. Make the women in your life feel special all the way around. How about that? Amen. Reward her for all she has done. Mothers, they'd go through a lot. I can't under, I mean, I go through the burdens with, with you guys. I'll have burdens. But, oh, my gosh, I can't imagine the burden of having a natural child on top of that. It's like, ooh, it's, it's a little bit, it's a little tough. <laughs> so, so I respect all the mothers out there. Hats off to you guys for the children you're raising and bringing them to church. It's not easy. It's not easy. And, and. Coming here on a Wednesday night in the middle of crazy traffic after you're at work all day and trying to get it all together and hustle and bustle to get here. It's just amazing. Families coming in with their kids. So I just, my hat's off to all, your, all the parents that go in above and beyond trying to get the word of God into the children. It's, a, it's needed more than ever. We don't know what tomorrow holds, but we just take thought for today because tomorrow will take thought for itself. Amen. So reward her for all she has done. Respect all the women. Honor all the women and the mothers in your life. Let her deeds publicly declare her praise. Notice how it said deeds. Let her deeds publicly de declare her praise. Not words. Moms, you got to stop talking a little bit. This is for you, moms. I, and you know what? Not just moms. I'm talking all Christians. So every, this is for all the Christians. We got to stop talking and posting about we getting people straight or whatever it is. I don't know. I don't see everything all the time, so I don't know. But you, letting everybody know you, you got to serve. It's good to serve God, serve God. We're not on a Christian website. So your deeds, public, we got to get back to the old school. It's relationships. It's relationships. It's our deeds. It's being an example, showing love, giving an extra tip when you're out uh, for the, waiter, the waiters or the servers. We, my husband and I, we're constantly being mindful of extra tips, an extra percentage. We go from 20%. Sometimes we'll give 30 or 40% just on that time because we felt led in our spirit to do it. We go above and beyond. Let your, her deeds publicly declare her praise. Let your deeds pray in the closet. Go in your prayer, your prayer war room or whatever you want to call it. Get in there and pray for the things that you're believing for. And God can move a lot faster. And, and you won't make your kids mad, your older ones especially, when you're trying to tell them, get to church, get to church, get to church. How many know at some point they're not hearing you anymore? You got to let life take its course. You got to let the Holy Spirit do the job that you're wanting to do, Mom. So you got to know when to let go. But when they're little, they're still accountable. When they're growing up and they're under the age of adulthood, they're still growing up. How many know they're accountable because they're in your household? And, well, I'm going to do what I want to do. Well, you can do what you want to do when you start working and paying your own bills and living in your own house. Amen? That's the way it works, church, because how many you know when somebody is supporting you, they have a right to be in the Kool-Aid. doesn't matter how old you are, they're going to be in the Kool-Aid. So mothers, we know we get mothers getting more emotional and, and they're, they, they do a lot more communication regularly than a man does percentage wise. I'm not saying men don't, but I'm saying mothers do communicate a lot more sometimes with their kids. So we got to let our deeds, mother's deeds, publicly declare the praise. Hallelujah. We can't get caught up in too much words because sometimes, how many know my, my testimony? My mother stopped talking 
She left, and that's when God started working. Hallelujah. Her deeds, she left the example before me. And then I was drawn into the old Lakewood church. I saw a big billboard. It said, an oasis of love. And I saw John Osteen, the, the father of Joel Osteen, mighty man of God, if you've never heard him. I don't even know if you can find any of his sermons. My husband's probably found a few. Mighty man of God, evangelist through and through, pastor was all around him, and he would preach, and he would preach the house down and preach against sin. He preached the entire gospel of Jesus Christ, and when I would hear him, something would happen to me, and my mom was nowhere near me. It was all the, the Lord and her prayers. So how many of you know mothers? Mothers, when you pray for your kids, God's listening, especially when it comes to, to having them fulfill the will of God for their lives. The whole God's ears are perked up and open. Hallelujah. Let's all stand to our feet.